Uh, thank you for the lecture. I really enjoy it. I think it's very interesting how you structure uh, the presentation. I have a, a more comment um, uh, about uh, the distrust of communities on uh, go governance. Uh, I think it's something that you, we talked about, and I think it's very much in in, uh, in many disasters in developing countries, but also in, in poor areas in developed countries, that people mistrust uh, the government, but also they are, uh, they are ha it's hard to convince someone to leave their house, their home, uh, all their belongings, and to go to a shelter, and now no, don't have uh, the chance to come back to your belongings. And everything you have is in this house. Many people don't have any savings, so uh, it's, uh, they take a shot. Sometimes they take a shot. I come from Brazil, and there is a lot of uh, disasters there, and, and you you see this in the communities. And it's really hard because uh, the government uh, does very little to um, replace the income that the, their, these families uh, lose when it happens uh, a disaster. So uh, it's also a, pr a problem of policies. Uh, how can we help these people to to even if we have a, a really good system of warning people, okay, but after that, after the disaster uh, takes place, what do we do with all these people, of the, all this income that is lost? Yeah, <laughs> I don't have much, to, much more to say. We have the, it's not just in Brazil. I have many places in France where uh, you have um, a village um, exposed to lar that are coming down uh, very regularly, but people uh, continue to live in the exposed area. And it's kind of difficult to convince them to move because it's old people usually uh, in big houses that they built with their family, but then old people are alone. And uh, what is proposed to them is to move to a, a flat because they are just one person, but they lose a big house with uh, all the rooms for the family. And they, it's very hard for them to accept that, so they, they don't want to do. But um, one should say that prevention is usually the, where, where, where things could be done better, because in many places, uh, urban development has been made unregulated. Uh, and. Uh, uh, even today, we have many places where um, the installation settlement of people is not uh, regulated enough or not followed. The rules are not followed. Yep. Um, so concerning Venice, do you think the government, they, they, I, I don't understand why in Venice the government don't implement prevention for their habitants and they, they never explain to them that, well, uh, if we keep continuing like we're doing right now, then Venice is going to disappear in like 20 years. And I don't understand how, how we can let government not have this, um, uh, let, peop let people know about what is going on. I don't know how, how does it work and what are the regulations. I, I'm not sure I, I, list, I, I could hear everything you said. Oh, you sorry. talked about Venice? Yes. Yeah, okay. And you say that the government doesn't make enough prevention yes. or information yes. to the population. And, uh, that my that question that is basically why. Yeah, uh, right. yeah that, that's, um, that's something we observe in many places again. And um, there is a, what always strikes me uh, when I go on the field uh, is the disconnection between uh, practitioners who are usually people who want to do good, people who work in risk, they want to help, to protect, to uh, civil protection, you see them, they want to help people, that's really the, their job. And, uh, but the, 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 the bureaucracy, the system is built in a way that you don't understand why, but the messages don't go through. It's kind of stuck <laughs> within the state services, it doesn't go to the mayors, uh, there is a disconnection in between, and it doesn't go from the mayors to the population, uh, because sometimes uh, we we are uh, interested by the, the living our lives <laughs> uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's really something that is uh, being worked. But I think we don't have any solid uh, <laughs> solution yet to to go further. We 
there are many questions. I don't know. Yeah, but right. Yeah, just because uh, the mic was here. And in the beginning, we were talking about a difference between an emergency and a disaster. And yeah, for me, it was very interesting when we are doing that kind of uh, separation in terms of the media. But it is also the case when we are talking about the cases in which the, me me the media actually gets to cover. And when we have an accident or a disaster, such as the one that happened in Germany, uh, the coverage is incredibly high because it is unprecedented. And we were in Berlin in the context of the Masters when this happened. And I remember that people would say, we don't expect peop uh, this kind of uh, disaster or emergency to happen here because this is the kind of problem that will happen in developing countries. And now it's in Germany, so we have to take action. And in a sense, this is not only a disaster, but it's an emergency because climate change is coming for us, in a sense. And maybe I would like to ask you, um, how can we actually mobilize people to understand that this kind of disaster or emergency has been recurrent in developing countries, not only because of infrastructure, but because there is a, there, there is a climate problem all around. Like, is there a like, um, mechanism for activism coming from the south to people to understand that Germany or like, Europe is not immune to, to climate change in a sense? And maybe my question is a little bit rhetorical, but how do you do that in your case at least? Yeah. Hard question again. There are only hard questions about risk, actually, you know, <laughs> I tell you. But uh, uh, there are many two sides to your questions. I think there is the side of the memory uh, in general. Um, when there is an event, usually what you see in the media coverage, that it's an exceptional event. We have never seen that. And people tell you that. They say, ah, oh, we never saw that in our uh, village or in, in our city. Because there is a sh kind of a short memory of events. And we are always uh, uh, really hit by the level of the, of the impact. Usually it's, uh, it's iterates people. So that's also why they say it's exceptional. So this is one effect that we usually don't know well the past events. And um, I think in Germany too, you, you, could have, uh, you could find events that could um, uh, might be like this one before. So th there is one side to, to, to answer. But the other side is, of course, the frequency of these events are changing due to climate change. And that's where you might uh, use uh, the events that are occurring to actually do some prevention, which is uh, f the, what, we sh what we see with media, because we work a lot with the media uh, on, on this uh, question, is that they have a very short window of interest. So if you want to, uh, to go through with messages, you need to take that window. So if there is an, an event somewhere in the world, you take it and you speak about the other issues of risk reduction at that time. That really is a way to go, otherwise the media interest, it's a window that it's too short to really cover the issues. So that is maybe one answer to that problem, but it's probably not the only one. Yep. I'll just keep on like the mic, so. <laughs> Uh, I have like have a question towards what is changing in the political landscape, because for example, where I'm from, we have a huge problem with too much water. So there's like there's always been heavy rains, but now we reach like tipping points where there's too much water in the ground and everything starts moving on scales that we didn't see before. And the second side of it is is uh, like hail, like just destroying the crops. And this has been something that has been there before. But only now, with this increased like, intensity of the situation, all those insurance systems that we have put into place are becoming heavenly unsustainable. And we see that like, hail insurance for farmers like, just gets too expensive, and like, the, the debris deplacement after just gets too hard for the villages. So I was wondering if there's like, any like, movements or something that try to like, bring in attention here and like, saying, like, look, those things are going to get way more expensive in the future and we need to like, prepare today for tomorrow? Yep. Uh, so the, the, the issue of insurance is a, is a big one. Um, in France, we have a one chance <laughs> is that we have a public insurance that insure private insurances in case of uh, disasters. So uh, there, it's kind of a um, um, heavenly distribution of the risk between all the French people everywhere. You can always find an insurance that will assure you in case of disaster because the state will pay if there is a disaster. Still today, 
uh, because there is there are discussions uh, in the insurance uh, um, sector about uh, um, breaking actually this uh, this system how it functions today and I think in other countries and even European countries it works a bit differently than in France and uh, with the climate change it's a big a big question as who will insure people who will insure insurance and uh, what part the states will play in these insurance systems and I, I think that's a big a big issue that you point out and I don't think there are any solutions yet on the table um, thank you very much for your presentation it was very interesting I have a, a question I think it's pretty clear that most countries and states are not, not doing a great job in terms of prevention and emergency management and all of that. Um, but do you know of any cases of communities or countries that are doing good, you know, a good job <laughs> in terms of, of risk management, emergency systems? I'm asking this because I've, I've read that Cuba, for example, mm -hmm. has a, a good emergency uh, risk system. And I think this is very interesting because of the characteristics of Cuba, not only economic and political, but also the fact that it is um, in a very vulnerable geographical it's position. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I, I mean, not necessarily Cuba, but if you know of any cases like where we can maybe learn some lessons. That's, uh, uh, alors we, we usually address the problem the other way around, but it's true that um, uh, the, the trouble with uh, Cuba is that we, we are not always sure about the numbers. Uh, so uh, yes, there is this idea that they manage, they manage better, notably because uh, I'm thinking about the Irma and Maria uh, hurricane in the, in the Antilles in um, 2017. Uh, they hit quite badly uh, the French Antilles, uh, Saint-Martin and, and Saint-Barthélemy. It was a, a nightmare there. Uh, but we didn't evacuate anyone. So people were hit uh, badly by the, by the winds, but also by the water that um, 